Hello, your favorite Schizo Rambler returns. This time, a video about the 90s and the 2000s. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to get in to this very simply. This is going to be a very unorganized video. Very. But if you happen to stick around, you might learn something. So, for those watching, I like to study things. Um, these things are usually unconventional and very unknown, at least to the Western world. But to the very small minority of the Russians who watch my stuff, I'm going to introduce something that if you were born in the 90s or weren't, weren't, weren't born in the 90s, you can just ask your uncle, your dad, or your mom. The collapse of the Soviet Union. We're going to start this in 1990. This year was pretty much basically Soviet Union's on its last legs. It's still got another year, but the only notable thing that I can think of is either Kuwait, like the first Gulf War. I don't know, that might have been in 99, I don't remember. Eh. But it was the death, I believe in April and or May. Of Victor Soy, the lead singer to the band Kino, a band I love greatly. Big shame. Now, fast forwarding, December 25, 91. Soviet Union's gone. It just <clears throat> dies, right? So, Eastern Europe is in a power vacuum now. Who's going to be the big players? Who's going to be the people that control all the moolah? Also, for those wondering, this is an Uzbek hat. I'll explain later. So, Russia's off rumbly. You're in 92. You're dirt fucking poor. You have three cents to your name, and that means you're the richest in your village and the richest in half of Moscow. So, Russia at this time was a cesspool of crime. A very large area. Not a very large area. But a very large majority of the country resulted to stealing, to bribery, and basically whatever they could to survive. It is no exaggeration what I mean. I know guys who went there during the 90s, talked to a soldier, bought his rifle for a loaf of bread. I'm not fucking with you. I know people who have done that. Do they still have the rifles? No. But they still have most of their equipment. Good for me. I get it. Yeah. Now, on to what I was saying. You're dirt poor if you're in the fucking Soviet world. Uh, Yugoslavia, also kaput. Fucking <laughs> dies. Right? So, now you get to 93. Yeltsin's in power. You get to the 93 constitutional crisis within Russia. The people within the pe the people within the land are like, yeah, the Soviet Union may be gone, but we don't think so. We want them back, and so they get all uppity, all pissy, and whatnot. Uh, people of, I'm not really good with the Constitution. I I, I like the stuff. I like the kit. I'm not that mi big of politics. I like studying war. I don't like politics. Now, onto what I was saying. Uh, basically, I don't know what led up to it. I know that there were a bunch of riots, a bunch of people got very pissy, and then the people within the, what is it, constitutional building, uh, held up, said, Boris, go fuck yourself, and, uh, then got shelled by a bunch of tanks and killed a f <laughs> around 500 civilians. A uh, detachment of army guys, and I think MBD officers, um, Ministry of Internal Affairs, Sort of, I don't know what their name was back in 93. Mm. But basically, Russia was somewhat a democracy in 91 and in, for the remaining bit of 91. And 92, very unfunctional democracy, but a democracy nonetheless. And then it just basically became a dictatorship once Yeltsin crushed the people within power. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to take off my jacket. So, uh, well, I'm taking off my jacket. I might as well keep talking. The, then you fast forward a year. 94. Yeah, uh, 
I'm not even really going to touch much on Yugoslavia because I'm not a big Yugoslav nerd. I like the power vacuums within the 90s more, uh, primarily in Russia. Also in 93, the Tajik Civil War, the largest war within the uh, post-Soviet world happened. At least, not scale, in death. Around 100,000 people were de uh, were killed as a result of this war, and Russia played sort of loose shot with how they operated. They kind of picked sides whoever had the most money. Now, on to what I was saying. The people... Uh, then, then you get to Chechnya. Hell. Hell. Russians, they did all right out in the countryside, to my knowledge. You get to Grozny. Fuck. The Russians were all right out in, like, the larger, you know, here's a village controlled by Chechens. Let's just bomb the shit out of it. See, it's in this one grid square. Turn the grid square into a big fucking hole. You got that? Yeah. Send it in. And then they just fucking level it. And then they send some troops in. Oh, yeah, there's one Chechen there. Uh, he may be a four-year-old, but <clears throat> just kill him, you know. It's kind of what the Russians did. And thus, and then when they get to Grozny... The generals who, most of the smart ones who were in Afghanistan are gone now. They're gone. Most of the Chechens, however, if they're not a 16-year-old, they have combat experience. Most of them served in Afghanistan and uh, there, there were, there was a reason why they were called ghosts. And that was because they slipped through the Tajik border. Also, the Tajik Civil War went from 93 to 97. So... The Chechen Wars end, I think, in 96. Do not quote me on that. But they end somewhere in 96, I think. Uh, okay, so, on to what I was saying. Russians get to Grozny. They're just kind of surrounding the place. And then you have the most infamous, you know, guys go in to help Grachev, however the fuck you say his name, shit-ass general. They want to go in, take the city for his birthday. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Good, they go to Dudiev's palace and get fucking obliterated, you know, as most things, you know, no fucking planning, barely any air support, no infantry cover, you're just throwing fucking armor at the wall and saying, <laughs> work, you know, anyways, these generals, most of them, drunk fucking idiots, have no care for their troops, the Chechens within Grozny, Something that they would ditch as soon as they get pushed out to the mountains. When the Russians start winning, they get really brutal. The, the Chechens, depending on who you were captured by, would either take you to Dutiev's palace and keep you prisoner so that they could get their own guys back, or they'd behead you. There's evidence of that in, in Grozny. Some Russian units, some Russian squads were found fucking beheaded. But, yeah, enough of that. Basically... Bunch of people fucking died because of incompetent leaders who wouldn't send in air support along with infantry support to help their uh, armored push into the city. Now, the Russians eventually take the city. Cost them a lot of guys. Cost the Chechens, you know, good and bad man power. Then it's basically mountain fighting until I think 97 or 96, somewhere around there. Or sometime in 95, late 95. They stop. Now, we're going to put a kibosh on Russia and Eastern Europe for a second. We're going to go to the U.S. The U.S. currently is having the time of its fucking life. Now, you did see a few outliers here and there. Ruby Ridge in 92 and Waco in 93. We had just come back from winning the Gulf War, which is, I think, to date, the last war we have won. If you want, <laughs> yeah, just, just to remind you, we won a war 30 years ago. All the wars that we fought now, we fucking lost. You, you may fucking cry yourself to sleep thinking, oh, we won, Af we won Iraq, we won Iraq, we killed Saddam. No, you fucking didn't. I'll, I'll get to that when we get to the 2000 section. Now, on to what I was saying. Life was good. You had... America during the early 90s was winding off of the 80s exceptionalism and how everything was good. The disgusting and corrosive underbelly upon the nation was shown. 
you had the disgusting steroid HIV AIDS. You had all the bad shit that was hidden during the 80s be brought to light. Hell, I think in 96 was when all the MK Ultra papers were found. Uh, I fucking hate the CIA. Uh, there, there, there's some good people within the CIA. The people who operate overseas, yeah, they're good. The people who operate on land upon the U.S., I fucking hate them. Eh. Don't like those guys. Uh, for all those who are wondering, that is a joke. CIA officers, please do not come to my house and kill me. Anyways, now... You get Waco. Or you get Ruby Rich. Spike. Absolute fucking spike. In American distrust for the government. After Waco. Or after Ruby Rich. You know, it starts to... It goes... Whoop. It, whoop starts to curtail. Then you hit Waco. Whoop. Immediately goes straight up. Also, at the time, you had NASCAR being coming very popular. I, I can't explain all things America back in the 90s. I'll, I might make a video on that later. Now, the American people at the time fucking hated the government. They trusted their corporate overlords. They trusted McDonald's more than they trusted Bill Clinton. <laughs> Which fucking makes me chuckle to say that. But, yeah... Basically, America in the early 90s, you had that large wave of anti-culture, or anti, whatever the fuck it's called, anti-culture, I guess, I don't know, anti-society, uh, rebellion, I guess, against establishments and the, the man. As the American people were more put from heavy industry and construction into office jobs. People fucking hate office jobs. God, I know I do. Even though it's a good, stable job that pays more. You know, I'd fucking hate to do it. Fuck's sake, I'd rather go die in a war than work an office job. Huh? Uh, but, yeah. American people in the 90s fucking hated authority figures and I mean hated that's why you saw people like I don't know Triple H uh, yeah I think it was Triple H who uh, uh, Triple H and Stone Cold Steve, Steve Austin in WWE that's why they loved them because they beat the shit out of the boss Vince McMahon yes this is going into wrestling I will explain later no I won't <laughs> But they, they loved watching authority figures get their shit kicked in. And they and they hadn't seen, you know... I don't, I don't fucking know. They hadn't seen the... Evisceration of American troops yet in Baghdad and Fallujah. We'll get to that once I get to the 2000s. Alright, enough of America in the early 90s. Now we're getting to Russia and Eastern Europe to a degree. So... I kind of skipped over uh, Azerbaijan and the other one because they're always at war. We, 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 we. Throughout the entire time I've known, other than the time that they were under Soviet occupation and I believe Russian occupation, they've been <laughs> like fucking morons. Alright, they keep killing each other. Uh, war! Anyways. Yeah, uh, I won't really touch on those guys, but I have seen quite a bit of stuff from them. They were they were the first guys to c commit war after the breakup of the Soviet Union. Actually, no. No, it was the English Civil War within Russia. The only civil war, that I believe. I think it was 91 to 92, or 92 to 93, sometime around there. Very small civil war in the southern region of Russia. Sort of near Dagestan, Chechnya, and Gishetia. Like it was named after the English Civil War. Now, back to Chechnya and Russia at whole. Russia at the time, you're still dirt poor. Your brother or your cousin just came back from Chechnya. He watched his friends get fucking melted in a BTR. He's traumatized. To my knowledge, Chechnya 
because Chechnya had no ruling enemy to rally around and fight against, basically became a failed state with possible FSB inter inter interfuckery. Basically, they just kind of went in, said giggity giggity goo motherfucker, and might have destabilized shit. But a bunch of warlords basically cracked through, killed a bunch. I don't fucking know. What do you want me to say here? I don't. I don't know much about Chechnya during the interwar periods. But back to Russia. Basically, Russia, especially during the Chechen wars, a lot of guys were either. They, they were either born during Ger Gorbachev's reforms and had no real problem with the decadency that they saw within Russia or they just didn't really give a shit. But then you had the communists. I saw this one good, uh, 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 not essay, documentary. Russian soldier. He was in Chechnya. He was really upset about what Moscow had become because he had watched it go from a decent city if not poor to this decadent hellhole which is now even poorer that you saw lust you saw everything in it and he hated it I'm getting off track now back to Back to Russia. Or back to Chechnya. Russians go back in sometime around 99, 98. I don't really remember when. Uh, I'm not that big of a second Chechen war guy. But I can tell you it ended in 09. That's when the hostility ceased. Uh, but now... Basically, Russia this time, smarter. <laughs> they don't just, you know dilly-dally around with reporters. I think it was the first Chechen war that taught them don't have reporters around because reporters basically fuck you because the Chechens can watch TV and see where your troop movement's gonna be, you know? So, the Russians, no reporters allowed unless they're propagating state media. Right? You know, pretty bad. But, they take Grozny, they leave... Grozny gets re-infiltrated, they take Grozny again, but they're much smarter about it. They don't just, <laughs> I'm, uh... no, they actually use infantry, they use air support, and they basically starve the fucking city out. Some Chechens route, manage to sneak through, yada yada, right? But Russia within the late 90s was... There's this feeling of hope, I think. I don't know. I wasn't there. But they had this idea that things would get better. And they had money. They were all right. To a degree, they had money. But things were starting to stabilize. Things were starting to get better, you know, war is fucked, and, you know, Russia's still in the 90s, depressive fucking shithole, that, you know, uh, but, you know, the great crime wave had pretty much, had died down quite a bit. If you don't know, Russia in the 90s had something known as, I think it was the Copper Wars, which was basically rifle copper companies went around killing each other so that they could get money. So that they could kill off their own competition. Now, back to America. America during the late 90s, mid to late 90s, entered an era of what I can only describe as bliss. There was... People still didn't... Uh, to my knowledge, people still didn't really like the government. They still didn't really like their, uh, you know... Authority figures, you know, teachers, bosses, federal agents. But we had, from a testament of people who were alive then, we had the best players, we had the best media, we had the best pretty much everything at the time. We were on top. We had no rivals. We were undefeated. The great foe was gone. 
it looked like we were going to enter a era of peace and tranquility led by the U.S. I think back to the uh, quote from The Matrix that is based on 1999 USA. We copied it because it was the best time. Something along those lines. I don't know the fucking quote. But a part of me is starting to think that that was true. That was where America peaked. We had no foes. We were at the best that we could be. You had 2000. We entered the great new technological age. Then you got to 2001. You had early in the year. This is going to sound pretty bold and ballsy, but... You had early in the year the death of Dale Earnhardt. One of the second biggest sport watching one of its biggest players... Die. It's a pretty big shock to you. It was one of the final nails within the coffin. It was the beginning of the end of NASCAR within popular culture. Then you had 9-11 later in the year it was a horrible attack upon the u.s i won't get into what i truly think but horrible attack nonetheless without some government involvement uh, i won't get i won't get into that i don't want to get assassinated but it spiked american nationalism people wanted to go in and kill Osama bin Laden. You know? They wanted him fucking gone. So they joined up in the military. They joined up to hunt and kill Osama bin Laden. And our response, early in our war in Afghanistan, and when I mean early, I mean October through November, 08, or 01, I should say, we were doing a good job limited American presence into Afghanistan because the CIA realized Afghanistan isn't a nation. It's a bun it, it's okay. It's why in Afghanistan you don't see a diplomacy. You don't see democracy. You see one strong central figure because Afghanistan is a group of ethnic tribes. Uzbeks, Tar Tartars, yeah, I think they're I think they're Tartars. Uzbeks, Tajiks, Kazakhs, uh Turkmen, Kyrgyz. I think it was Huntars, maybe? I don't know. That might be an African tribe. I don't really remember. But there's this one tribe who had been fucking massacred back in the nineties. But Pashtuns as well. And we we started with the Uzbeks and the Tajiks because we had Dasum. We had Dasum and the other guy. When we basically, you had the Northern Alliance, you had the Southern enemies, basically uh, Taliban here, uh, Dasum and the Tajik here. Dasum and the Tajik sweep down. They take Mazar i Sharif. Taliban presence within the nation as a strong central figure crumbles. They had suffered heavy, heavy fucking casualties due to American air power and due to American assistance with these said ethnic group leaders. Now these we we easily could have won Afghanistan. This is going back to a previous thing I said in the video, but we easily could have won Afghanistan. We could have never won Iraq. You had such a large amount of people go in to fight in Afghanistan, and then they just get sent to Iraq. We went into Iraq for the wrong reasons. We went into Iraq for money. And to stop Saddam Hussein from selling money, or from selling oil barrels in euros, because that took away from the power of the U.S. dollar as the national, or as the international currency. 
Because if you don't have a U.S. dollar to buy oil, what's the point of the U.S. dollar? It's not backed by anything. It hasn't been backed by anything since the 70s. What's the fucking point of it? If you don't have it. If you don't have it linked to something. A.K.A. oil. Now. Away from America. I'll get to Iraq. Russia within the... 2000s entered a golden age I'd say a very good era people had money people they weren't insanely rich by any means but they were prosperous they had some money they were able to live comfortably the depressive episode upon the 90s had somewhat ended Russia involvement in Russian involvement within the second Chechen war was very limited but you know it was still there but it was limited. I have no idea what the Russians thought. 9-11. Nor the death of Dale Earnhardt. I don't think they really cared about er Earnhardt, but I know that they were like, damn, that's pretty bad. The Russians didn't really... The, the Russians were just basically in a golden period. Eastern Europe at the time had somewhat come out of its power gap. It had 